the Chargers season is days away and likely will be here before we even realize. But there is one final note that I'd kind of like to get out there, and it's, it's about Joey Bosa. And the fact that I think he can be a candidate, if not the winner, of the Defensive Player of the Year. Now, earlier on in the year, if you haven't checked out this video, I would suggest that I made a video on Justin Herbert being an MVP front candidate. And that video did extremely well, and this video is going to be in a very similar layout. We're going to go through Joy Bosa's stats year by year, go through why I think he's going to improve, and also talk about what he has to do to reach that Defensive Player of the Year potential. So, if you enjoy this content and you want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and I cannot do that without your guys' help. But let's not waste any more of your time. Joey Bosa for Defensive Player of the Year. That is the whole topic of this video. And Joey Bosa has solidified himself as a top defensive player in the league. But has struggled to reach a point where he has been considered a defensive player that you're finalist, not even being in the top five through his entire career. Bosa is sixth in sacks in the entire league since 2016. So it's not like he hasn't been consistent and playing at a top level. It's just that he hasn't put it all together. He's been extremely consistent year after year, getting over 10 sacks. He just hasn't reached that level where he can be above in that top part. Now, Bosa has also consistently been a top player even when being doubled and triple teamed, which I think is something that's really important to look at. He's getting these numbers, 12 sacks, 13 sacks, 10 sacks, all these numbers with being double teamed and triple teamed through his entire career. Not only that, but he's incredible in the run defense. He can get you tackles. He can tackle you behind the line of scrimmage, as well as sometimes dropping into coverage at that outside linebacker spot. Now, first, let's kind of move into Joey Bosa's stats from the past. Last year, he had 10 and a half sacks, which is not an incredible number, but still a pretty favorable number. He had seven forced fumbles, which I think was top three, top five in the entire league, as well as being his career high. And he had 51 tackles, which is about normal for an edge player. His career high is 12.5, and his career high, 12.5 sacks, and his career high in tackles is 70. Now, with those numbers by themselves, they're maybe not jumping off the screen at you, but as one player doing that, I think that's something that's important to take a look at. But with that being said, Bosa reached those numbers quite a few years back, and this defense has improved a lot, which I think will help Bosa reach his full potential. So this topic right here is going to be why Joey Bosa will improve this year. Now, Joey Bosa saw a great performance last year as Staley's defense really allowed Bosa to get more pressure on the quarterback and just play more the way that he wants to. Not only that, but Bosa has also improved personally by forcing more fumbles, by getting more pressure on the quarterback, by learning new moves from Khalil Mack, as well as being more healthy, which he said has been an issue an issue for him for quite some time not only mentally more healthy but physically more healthy which will allow him to really focus in on his techniques and hopefully win more of his matchups in game now bosa also saw his best years when having a of another top edge on the other side of him previously having melvin ingram who was a pro bowler quite a few times now you bring in khalil mack which I would say is better than Melvin Gordon ever was, even as late in his career as Mac is, I think that's likely going to open up the field a little bit more for Joey Bosa. With the constant doubles and triple teams that he faced, the addition of Mac will not only take away the ability for them to consistently double team and triple team, but it may also lead to more sacks as the quarterback's going to have to run away from Mac on the other side, which could push him into Bosa, as well as Bosa's ability to just get sacks by himself. Not only Mac's addition, but the remainder of the team's addition is going to take pressure off Bosa, as well as allow Bosa to really pursue on the passing side of the defense. With the terrible rushing defense that the Chargers had last year, they improved it dramatically, bringing in Sebastian Joseph Day, Austin Johnson, Otito Abogna, Kyle Vinoy, and, and plenty of other options, as well as Khalil Mack, who is one of the top edge rushers on defense, 
having that ability is going to allow for Bosa to really focus in on just being able to pursue the passer on most downs and not worry about having to start a little bit slow because they might be running it and if he goes too fast he's going to be the only guy that can stop them because the defense was really poor last year in the, in the rushing defense but with the improved rush defense I think it's going to allow him to be a little bit more comfortable to immediately come out firing and not have to worry about being a little bit slower and ready for that run straight down the middle or a sweep on the outside even with all the developments on the d-line the biggest reason for Bosa's success will be the secondary. With J.C. Jackson added to the fold as well as Michael Davis hopefully returning to what he was just two years back, Asante Samuel Jr. will be improving off of his rookie year in which he did look pretty solid. Derwin James will just re-sign to his contract and will be on this team. Nas Adderley as well as J.T. Woods are going to be competing and hopefully improve one another. All of these improvements on the secondary will take away open opportunities in the passing game, which is only going to give Joey Bosa more time to pursue the quarterback and hopefully go get a sack or pressures, which are also an important stat to look at. So the question is, what will it take for Joey Bosa to win the Defense Player of the Year? Last year, we saw TJ Watt take home the crown after tying the record for sacks near with 22.5 in one season. That was absolutely insane. But what is important to note is the likelihood of him repeating that is extraordinarily unlikely. Seriously, it, it's it's absolutely insane that he did that and props to him. Absolute props to him. And I'm sure he's going to be trying to chase it and beat the record this year. But the fact is, being able to do that again is going to be so difficult because people are going to game plan directly around you, around TJ Watt. Now, in reality, something similar to Bosa's stats last year could put him in competition if he improves just slightly on those numbers. Aaron Donald won Defense Player of the Year three times in the past like five years, and when he won in 2020, he only had 13.5 sacks and four forced fumbles. Bosa last year was only three off of that. Many years in the past decade, winners have had lower than 15 sacks. Many have also had less than 70-some tackles, as well as quite a few less than five forced fumbles. All of those numbers, I think, are very attainable for Joey Bosa. The biggest factor in this is how well can he perform. So, here are my predictions. Even with Bosa's previous career high being 12 and a half sacks, the additions of Mack, of JC Jackson, Kyle Van Noy, all of these guys and a new system that Staley brought in last year that works a little bit better for Bosa, I think is going to be enough to jump Bosa to somewhere around 16 and a half sacks. And I could see him easily surpassing that, but I'm going to say 16 and a half is a pretty solid, confident number for Joey Bosa. With 16 and a half sacks, four additional sacks to his career high may seem like a lot, but there is another game each year added that was added as well as the fact that he's missed games through most of these years even the year that he had that break I think he missed a game or at least missed some time during games pretty consistently which means if Bosa can stay healthy play every single game as well as have this improved defense he will be able to go and get more sacks Bosa's seven forced fumbles were a career high but with his new techniques that he talks about in his press conferences constantly reaching subconsciously for the football to slap it on his hands I could see him easily attaining this number again so with that much of you know a defensive development I expect his tackle his tackles to slightly take a step down but with great sacks at 16 and a half and force fumbles that are likely to be right at that seven range he can still take this award home as mentioned a little bit earlier there's been winners such as Aaron Donald himself that have won with less than 15 sacks. And although last year was absolutely crazy, if no one else goes out and drops 20 sacks, Bosa with 16, 7 forced fumbles, and a solid number of tackles could be enough. But the question now is, can he win it? Currently, Bosa sits at 6th in Defense Player of the Year odds right now, right behind his brother at 5th. And although odds aren't really important to look at, I do find it intriguing to 
can take a look at, see how other people are seeing it. Maybe insiders who might have a better insight on how a defense might be ran, how people will scheme around it. And having him at sixth is, is pretty solid the way it already is. It's tough to argue that Bosa can knock off Aaron Donald or TJ Watt, who has been on a tear in recent years. And TJ, who just took out the took over the year. Oh my gosh, took over the league last year. Sorry about that, guys. But if Bosa can sneak in there with 16 or so sack, sacks and seven forced fumbles while being on a top defense on a team that is hopefully a top performer in the AFC, I could very well see Bosa ending up in photos at the end of the year with that statue. Now, with all that being said, I truly do think Joey Bosa can be in contention for Defense Player of the Year, if not even win it. And if he doesn't, I still think he can easily break his sacks in his career this season. But what are your guys' thoughts? Do you think that he's going to break his own career records? Do you think he's going to be in contention for a defense player of the year? Or do you think he's going to win it? Please comment that down below. And I can't believe that football is right here already. It's absolutely insane to me, and I'm so excited for that. But as Always, I hope it taught some today. Hope it made you smile. Hope it made you laugh. That's something that's really important to me. It affects the most of the day in a great way because every single day can be a great day if we all just put in the effort. And as always, you guys all be safe out there. But something deep inside won't let me.